Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Living Astrology with Janet Hickox. Grab your cup of coffee or your tea, sit back and let's chat about what is happening for today. It is Friday, Friday, and that means we are also taking a look ahead at the weekend. And I am calling this a very Aries weekend. It sounds like it should be a song, and indeed, it has its own energy, its own music, and its own craziness attached to it. I'm not thinking that it's going to be a terrible weekend, not at all. It's just whenever Aries is involved, that means that the uh, square to the planets Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto in Capricorn is going to be triggered. Anything in the opposing sign of Libra would be triggered. We don't have anything there, so there's no oppositions. And, and then also anything that would be in Cancer would be triggered. And at this point in Cancer, we actually have the last, uh, we have a new planet entering the sign of Cancer. Uh, Venus finished her transit through the sign of, of Gemini, where she spent a very elongated period of time because she was retrograde, right? So from April 10th or so uh, until this period of time, she's now finally moving not only out of her retrograde zone, but out of the sign of Gemini and moving on into Cancer. So we'll wanna be talking about that. The moon will be in Aries this weekend and that is joining up with Chiron, Eris, Black Moon, Lilith and the moon, I mean, and uh, Mars. So we have a lot of energy taking place. It, there's almost as much energy going on in Aries as there is in Capricorn. And that means at some point the moon will trigger those squares. As well, this weekend we have Mars, Eris, Black Moon, Lilith, actually on Sunday coming into a conjunction. So that might have an interesting effect on the outer world. I'm betting that this will be the time somewhere between today and, and Sunday or Monday. We'll hear maybe uh, who the running mate for Joe Biden might be. And I like, I think it's likely going to be a woman who is going to probably shake the foundations and uh, maybe make up some very good changes for us. We'll see what, how that plays out. And on Saturday, we have some really nice energy moving through. So it's not a terrible weekend, just one that's highly energetic, likely impulsive, impatient, and some of those more conflict-oriented energies may be popping up for us uh, in our relationships, but also in our own selves. So let me take a look here and say good morning to a couple of people that are popping in. Rueda, good to see you. Jennifer Peachy, good morning. Debbie Tibbetts, too, Meal, good morning to you. And Laura, great to see you. Good morning. And I'm sure as other people pop in, I will say wish everybody else a good morning. <sighs> Let's start. I'm also wanting to do some uh, some more card readings today. We did quite a few. Well, not quite a few. We did a few yesterday. And if Mimi pops in, I actually printed her solar return chart. I thought maybe we'd chat a little bit about that just because it's also informative for all of you as to how do we look at a solar return. And she may be listening to us from the gallery this morning, in which case um, it would be best to wait and see if she's okay with us sharing her info. And let's start then with today, Friday, we have the moon freshly into the sign of Aries. That happened at 6.05 my time, 9.05 for those of you on the East Coast, 8.05 Central Time and on West. And uh, that is a time when the moon, which is, is deeply feminine, very emotional, meets up in the ground that Mars rules. And so we have some conflict, we have some more impatient and impulsive energy that pops into our field as the uh, moon carries on through this particular sign. And she will spend the entire weekend in this sign. She doesn't go into the next void until Sunday the 9th at 12.50 p.m. and uh, emerges into Taurus at 6.28 p.m. So for the whole weekend, pretty much, we are dealing with Aries energy. We better get used to it, right? So in Aries energy, then with the moon, we'll take her first and then we'll break down the other um, energies that are in there. On uh, Today we have a sextile to Saturn and a square to Venus. Now those two things already happened. They happened before she actually moved into the sign of Aries this morning. So what's left for us in the day is a trine to Mercury. 
and we'll talk a little more about what that means. A trying to Mercury, trying ease and flow, right, of communication, um, but maybe a little fired up with some, you know, fire energy tinged with some emotion. So we'll, we'll talk a little more about that in a minute. Aries energy is all about taking action. It is, like I said, ruled by the planet Mars. So with Mars, we always want to move forward. There's this momentum building that takes place with Mars moving through, especially a sign that he rules. And of course, he is in the sign he rules right now, isn't he? Preparing for his slowdown into retrograde and then the retrograde cycle. Oh, I'm going to lose my computer. Hold on. <gasps> mm good catch. And then his eventual moving out of Aries, but not until January. So we have this elongated period of time. He's been there since June 27th. So his energy added to the sign adds that more compulsive, impulsive, I mean, um, conflict-oriented, impatient energy. So, or, you know, those energies are primary for us in the moment. So taking action is what Aries likes. It is the movement forward, the courage of one's convictions and the courage to take those first steps. Often those first steps are the hardest ones to come by. You know, when you're starting something new, what's always the hardest part is taking that first step and making that move forward. So momentum building is a part of this energy. So what are you putting your focus on? And that might be building up some momentum. You may have a new beginning, something new that you're doing, a new technique, a new program, a new something that is uh, propelling you as, in, as a forward motion. Uh, doing things your own way, Aries is a little bit hard-headed, very independent. This is energy that triggers our independence and our wanting to do it our way, right? Isn't there a song like that? I did it my way. And that's exactly what Aries' motto is with the moon in Aries. It's the emotional satisfaction that comes from doing things your way. And going it alone is another part of that. Often this is maverick energy, right? The, if you don't want to come with me, I will go on my own and I will succeed. So this energy, uh, very much courageous and action oriented. It is also the energy of just being, beingness. And I don't mean being as in just being a lump on a log. This is really about directness about the innocence of this sort of energy of just action, right? The youthfulness um, of the movement forward, right? The risks involved even in taking those first steps. And in some cases, there is a feeling of separateness. Women in particular who have the moon in Aries natally, they often feel like they're going it alone. Likely they don't, maybe, not always, they don't have a, a partner in their lives that they can depend upon. So they've learned by uh, time, through time, to really stand up and be their own best advocate. Um, but that can also take a toll in terms of them feeling a separate from everyone, not part of the whole relationship gig. And so sometimes that moon reminds us, the moon in Aries reminds us where we are uh, creatures that require people around us. And going it alone is great for the short term, but for the long term, you need people that love you, that support you, that you love, that you trust, that you support um, along with you. But Part of the other end here is a lack of being able to be independent and feeling frustrated. The more frustrated you, or the more dependent you feel, the more frustrated you get and the more uh, crazy that moon in Aries energy can get. So this is really about calling in your own personal authority, standing on your own two feet, but also knowing that the gift level if we go gene keys all on this, the gene key level, gift level here would be interdependence, right? It would be the realization that we are all in this together and that we need that mutual support of our family, of our friends, in order to um, be able to feel supported and to do what it is that we want to do in the world. No woman or man is an island, right? We have to have each other for support. And the moon in Aries will remind us of that, either because we're pulling off toward uh, into 
uber independence, maverick energy, or we're over here on the dependent and seething because we can't seem to get away from being dependent on other people. And sometimes that can even be a little bit of codependence because in the sign of Aries, the opposite sign, the polar sign is Libra. And we pull in some of those negative aspects of Libra, um, some of the positive ones too, but usually it, we're seeing the shadow energy in the opposition. And that shadow energy is codependence. So we may be dealing with some of those things, realizations in our own life. Where have we become too independent? Where have we become too dependent? Or even where have we become codependent? And is that serving us or not, right? And if it isn't, this energy will allow you to take the motion forward, the steps that you need to take. Aries energy is also energy of the fighter. So we have the energy here of conflict and the compulsive sort of argumentative energy, uh, the, the atmosphere of combat almost in this conflict, um, not being able to back down from those conflicts. If someone triggers us, we just can't back off. We're gonna, like a dog with a bone, hold on to it. Um, confrontational, we may be confrontational, although if we're aware of what the energies are for the weekend, we might resist that confrontation, but that doesn't mean that other people won't pull us in to their conflicts or their confrontation. Be careful of taking risks this weekend as well. This is really high energy and you may not note how dangerous something is or how risky something really is before you take action. So this calls for our cooler heads and cooler heads may be harder to come by. <laughs> so you might have to really stay aware, stay in your body, stay aware. We have to watch out for aggressive or overly assertive energies and attitudes coming to us from other people or that we are perpetrating outward from us onto other people in a conversation this is this is this is often how this works it's not even overt sometimes it's that you might be having a conversation with someone in your family or a friend it's all friendly until someone says something that you get triggered by and then next thing you know you are blowing up at them Right? And what started out as a, hey, how are you doing? Just checking in with you turns out to be, you know, you're terrible, you're horrible, you're an idiot, blah, blah, blah. Right? So we, <laughs> we don't want that. So we want to stay in our bodies. We want to stay in awareness and we want to watch our words. Right? We want to be okay with each other no matter what it is. We don't have to buy into the confrontation. We just don't. We don't have to be harsh toward others or to ourselves even. We don't have to browbeat ourselves or browbeat other people. We can avoid taking dangerous risks. There's a difference between taking a calculated risk and taking a dangerous risk. And we come face to face with that with the energy of uh, Aries and with Mars energy as well. Picking fights, don't do it, just don't do it. Just don't do it, right? Stay cool, calm, and collected. In the body, Aries rules the head. And that might mean the everything to do with the head itself, the skull, uh, the brain itself. In, you know, if, it's, if you hit your head and the damage that can happen to the brain, the eyes, uh, the ears, not the senses themselves. That comes through Taurus, but the organs themselves. So we have you know, this is where if you fall, you hit your head. So if you're bike riding, skating, you know, doing any skateboarding, because uh, I do that all the time, uh, bike riding anyway, um, wear a helmet, right? Wear your helmet, protect your head this weekend, because that is a vulnerable part of the body. Headaches, right? Migraines, those kind of things also a part of the experience of the moon in Aries. And it's not just the moon in Aries. As I said in the opening this morning, it is Eris, the black moon, Lilith, Mars, Chiron, part of fortune, Salacia, the moon. Lots of bodies in Aries energy. So Aries and Capricorn, it's squared energy. is yes i'm live on youtube i hope i'm live on youtube i'm getting text messages from people asking me if i am and it's interesting because i see some people out there but not our usual numbers um so let me just answer a couple people here really quick yes i am yes i wonder if i'm on the wrong channel um i can't tell You guys found me. 
and you found me in my usual place. So I'm guessing maybe there's just something going on in the system. Uh, so Rueda says it's extra, so it's extra on taking time and listening to my gut. Yes. And Laura, uh, I'm seeing people already who are positively on their game wanting a card reading. And uh, Laura, I don't know if you were with us yesterday, but I have a new deck of cards that I want to use this morning called the Oracle of the Seven Energies by Colette Baron reed And uh, yesterday I spent the day with some friends uh, for one of my friend's birthdays, and we had lunch, and we played with oracle cards of every kind. I took my dragons and the seven energies, and uh, they had, there was one that was an archangel, um, archangel Metatron deck. It was gorgeous and fun, and we played with the galactic heritage cards that my friend Londa had, and uh, it was fun. We just had a great time doing readings for one another, and I love Oracle cards. As you know, I have a total collection of them. So I will be doing some of those this morning with the new deck. And or if you have a preference for a deck, be sure to let me know that. Okay. Oh, I was answering Jacqueline saying, uh, does not show you are live, but I am. <laughs> um, I don't know what to tell her. And yeah, I see it. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm sorry, Jacqueline. I hope you find me find me. It says I'm live on YouTube, but you know what? This morning when I set it up, I don't know I, that I checked what channel, because I have two channels. I don't know how to get rid of the other one, um, and that may be the problem this morning. Maybe I logged into the other one. Mm -hmm. That would not be good, but it doesn't look like I am because uh, every my tube buddy is working, and it only works on that one channel, so I don't know, Jacqueline. Hopefully you find me. All right, let's move on because I want to make sure I have plenty of time for readings. The biggest news, perhaps for the weekend, for uh, the next several weeks, is that Venus today moved out of Gemini and is now in the sign of Cancer. So I always think of Venus, you know, because she, she rules beauty and sort of fashion and things like that, although glamour itself is Neptune uh, ruled. Um, this is uh, an energy of beauty and harmony. So I always think of her as wearing costumes when she changes signs she's changing costumes or she's changing characters right so Venus now in her cancer role as the great mother right the great mother energy that is nurturing caring and protective she will be in the sign of cancer for only a month from today until September 6th hard to believe that September is just a month away but she will be there a month where she has been in Gemini for about three and a half months so we've had a lot of that Gemini conversational energy, talking energy, mind oriented. Now we move into the emotional field, right? That, that cancer represents the emotional energy, the protective, mothering, sort of nurturing, compassionate uh, energy. So we are emotion, we have bringing emotion to our relationships, into our interactions with one another. We're more sensitive to what is going on around us and are more easily hurt then as well with careless words or careless actions that other people may take. And you may not, you know, your face may not register it, but in your heart, you feel like, you know, there's been a, a break or you may feel like you've been stabbed in the back. So all of us for the next month want to be very aware of how it is that we're interacting with one another. Are we being nurturing and compassionate and empathic or are we, you know, just saying things that blurt out of us without really caring or about the effect it has on other people? So being more sensitive, but also more aware of our emotional connection. Uh, Venus in Cancer shows love through feeding, through nurturing, through just taking care of. Let me plump your pillows for you. Let me draw your bath. Uh, let me, you know, they, that homey atmosphere, candles and scents and the, the sense of cookies, you know, the smell of cookies ro uh, roaming through the air. These are all home type of comforts. So this is a time of comforting and being comforted, uh, you know, the things that we love around us at home. So this is even a great time if you want to redecorate, if you are remodeling your house or rearranging furniture, letting, you know, just making it more comfy, more home-like, more uh, nurturing to you and to the family, creating sort of a, a nesting sort of feel, right? Where I'm, you know, getting cozy in my 
uh, one thing that was funny before I realized this was happening today, I'm thinking, I think it's time to take all my, my uh, lap blankets and go wash them, right? And let them hang out to dry before uh, the, you know, because for us, fall weather is already setting in. Uh, the temperatures have already, you know, they're starting to go on their downward trend. I mean, sure, we'll have warmer temperatures still, but you can tell even the trees are starting to look like they want to change color. And uh, I was noticing that the other day and that feeling that I have inside of me about, you know, going into the, let's clean everything up, let's get ready for the inner world. It's just kind of funny how that happens. And for, you know, the northern tier of states, often you probably are all noticing that change is, is getting ready to happen. And uh, for us here, that is usually August and September are our nicest months, but also beginning the cool down and the, as the, the days are getting shorter. So we, we might feel like we want to be more, you know, home. We want to be more around family. We want to be more where we are comfortable. And we may even set about to make things more comfortable for ourselves. So I suppose the thing about feeding is, you know, that, that joy we get when we sit around the table and we have conversation and we're eating good food with good friends or with family. So it's a lot of family friend time coming up. Cancer rules the home right? The, the home fires, if you will, the fourth house in a chart. So it is again to that place where our, our ancestral home is. So feeling good over those next several weeks while she is moving through cancer. And of course, we've had a lot of focus up until this point in cancer with Mercury spending a lot of time there during his retrograde, uh, the sun having just moved through there. And so now we have uh, Venus moving through here. She's just solidifying that connection that we have with home. And hopefully that doesn't translate into another stay home, be safe sort of order. It seems like at least in our, our area that perhaps the coronavirus is dying back again. Hopefully in your area that is true as well. Uh, let's take a look at Saturday very quickly. Saturday the, is probably the best feel-good week day of the weekend as some of the more stringent energies are not in play yet. Um, the moon will still be in Aries, of course, but she will be in a trine to the sun. And uh, this is uh, the sun is in Leo. So Leo and Aries, both fire energy. So the fire energy of confidence and empowerment and optimism and enthusiasm are all there. So the sun and the, the uh, moon in that trine in signs of the same element works really well. We do, do have to watch out because there's also a square to Jupiter that day. And so we'll just watch out for overblown expectations. Like if you expect up here and then it comes way short, then how does that make you feel? So keep your expectations open, right? Just expecting the unexpected even. Or it's, you know, just not having any expectations at all. Just checking in and being in the wonder of it all, the magic of it all. Don't overstate yourself either or your abilities. Don't take on too much. Sometimes the moon square Jupiter, we feel so enthusiastic. We feel so optimistic that we could take on the world. And then reality bites the next day when suddenly you go, oh, wow, I took on way too much. I cannot do all of this. And so we have to watch for overstating our abilities or for overdoing, right? Overdoing. We may have to adjust our walk of life to funny because that song was playing on the radio this morning and the background, just as I was writing that, uh, the walk of life was a song by uh, Dire Straits and that I was sort of singing that in my mind and writing the walk of life here because we may just have to adjust, move, you know, adjust back and forth in order to accommodate the changes or to accommodate where the universe is trying to pull us in whatever direction that is. So Saturday, good day. Just don't overstate things or overdo things. Stay in the moment. Uh, and also don't forget the moon and Aries still has those other qualities that we talked about, right? Anger, upset, assertiveness, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so just stay aware. But no, it's a day of more confidence and uh, less likely to have issues triggered for any of us uh, tomorrow. Sunday, however, a different day altogether. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Sunday, we have a Mercury in Leo trine Chiron in Aries. Again, this is this very Aries weekend because it all focuses right here in Aries uh, over the weekend. This is, though, a fairly decent connection, right? Chiron, typically, we think of as the wound, right? The wounded healer. So here is with Mercury, he's paired to create a pathway to more holistic thinking. 
And holistic thinking may have us focusing on alternative methods of healing or alternative methods of thinking about the problems that you've had or the communicating in a more constructive and helpful, uplifting and healing sort of way with people in your life. It could be, we could be mentally challenged by a lack of focus or disorganized thinking. Um, if that happens to be the case, stop thinking, go out and do something, right? Put your hands in the ground, put your hands in the sink filled with dishwater or put some dishes away or do something, you know, with your hands that diverts your attention from your mind. Um, because this is one of the minor little blips behind the scenes. Because really, if we're thinking more holistically, we're seeing the bigger picture, right? That's we're being able to focus in on healing energy and even in our communication, being able to focus that, uh, focus the words in the right way. Even the ones that we're speaking in our minds to ourselves, we may be able to hear ourselves in a pattern in our own thinking, the words that we're thinking the thoughts that we're thinking that are not a positive pattern. So maybe we have the opportunity then to heal that particular pattern, reinsert words in that uh, are more holistic and healing. The moon will still be in Aries on Sunday, although, like I said, on Sunday it moves into the void at, what was that, 12 something or another, 12.50 p.m. West Coast time, so 3.50 p.m. for those of you on the East Coast, and is in the void until 6 p.m., 6.56, what is it, 6.28 p.m., so 9.28 p.m., and then we'll be moved into Taurus. So literally, we are in Aries energy throughout the whole weekend. Lit, you know, literally, that doesn't change until later in the day. And by then, um, you know, all of the Aries action, we're ready to be done with it, right? We're ready to move on to Taurus. So the moon in Aries on Sunday hits up Mars, hits into a square with Pluto and Saturn. And then we have a moon, Mars, black moon, Lilith, Eris conjunction at 21 degrees for the first three. And then Eris at 24 degrees. So not long after that, that triple conjunction, we go into uh, the, enter, the moon inter, uh, entering a conjunction to Eris. So I, I was sitting with that this morning. I'm looking at it going, what is that? Because Mars, Black Moon Lilith, the Black Moon Lilith, she represents our shadow wound, our shadow um, fear. And in Aries, the fear may be about being independent, right? It may be uh, a fear of letting other people in to help you, right? Accepting help, accepting aid. Or it may be the opposite, which is being too dependent, afraid to stand out there on your own two feet, or having gotten into such a codependent relationship with someone, you're not able to extricate yourself from that, that position. And I think this is often, a, a, the Black Moon Lilith in Aries, is often one of those things for battered women, right? They get into these relationships, and even though it is emotionally chaotic, they may even be beaten or abused in some some way they don't they don't leave the relationship because their wound is that they are afraid to be dependent or to be independent that they've become so dependent or codependent in that relationship they can't get out and stand on their own it takes a lot of energy then a lot of willpower here to pull yourself and extricate yourself from those kinds of situations so do we have that as an opportunity Right. And in our own, and not everybody is going to have that as a wound, but collectively, that is the, the sort of shadow energy that is being pulled up for us right now. And I was really thinking about this. Um, this was actually me thinking about this yesterday, while Congress is still in our country, the USA, still struggling to come up with a bill for pandemic relief and all of that. I was thinking about how the government stepping in with money plays the role of helping those who are having troubles right now, paying their bills, maybe they've lost their jobs, et cetera. But on the other hand, it fosters the belief that the government can always bail you out and reduces our ability to be self-sufficient. So we have to find a nice balance. I get that. And that maybe is what Congress is struggling with. Who knows? I'd love to be a fly on the wall sometimes in those conversations. Uh, but here in our own lives, then, where are you struggling with the need to be self-sufficient, to really create a sustainability in your life that creates self-acceptance, self 
self-love, self, uh, uh, self-sustainability, self-discipline, all the selves, right? Uh, versus where you need to reach out and ask other people for help, right? So we're, we are maybe in the struggle to find the right interconnectedness, right? The right interconnectedness that supports everybody without making people too dependent upon uh, you or uh, the system or any one thing, but also without withdrawing any kind of uh, help that is needed. So finding that balance, right? Yeah. Always difficult, more difficult in Aries because the opposite sign is Libra. Libra is a master at finding that balance, but also waffling in which decision is best. I'm weighing all those, you know, uh, different options and who knows which one is the best one. So in this case, then um, we may be struggling within our own being um, mer walking that fine line between self-sufficiency, self-acceptance, and being too dependent uh, in, in, or too independent, and we need to become more interconnected and interdependent here, and understanding that we're all on this planet together, and if we cannot find a way to work together, we're going to implode right? Or explode, one of the ways. <laughs> one of those things, right? So we have to work together. Now, the fact that Mars is in here is interesting because he's the male counterpart to this very feminine energy, this trio, Black Moon, Lilith, Feminine, Eris, Feminine, the Moon, Feminine, right? So we have this trio, uh, maybe the triple goddess, even if you wanted to look at it like that, uh, up against Mars, right? So Mars, Maybe this is about coming together with the masculine and the feminine. Um, the the two, Black Moon, Lilith, and Eris, they're a little more contrary, right? That energy is very contrary and, and discordant, um, bringing up some of that those darker aspects that we need to work with. The moon, often very uh, calming and emotional, but she's in a sign that's very conflicting and also discordant. So the chances are that there might be some blow-ups on Sunday. There could, in the outer world, I'm thinking we're going to see very clearly the masculine-feminine dynamic, not men and women, but masculine-feminine, that the energy itself in a dynamic. Um, I, I'm interested to see who Joe Biden is going to choose for his running mate. And uh, I'm wondering then if that isn't the one that will be the most contentious, which will likely be Susan Rice. Uh, who, who knows? Maybe he chooses an extreme, a person that's completely out of the picture that maybe the most of the world stage doesn't know to be his running mate. That would be absolutely uh, in keeping with this energy as well. I meant to look, and I'm going to do that right now while we're on air. I meant to look in my astrological mandala, right? The Dane Rugier book. Uh, to see what that 21 uh, Aries energy would be about. So bear with me while I find it. So it is, here's the, 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 the symbol, I suppose you could say. The gate to the garden of all fulfilled desires. The keynote, abundance made possible by human togetherness and cooperation. How fabulous. In contrast to the crude and cruel road to fame and power symbolized by the prize fighter, we now see a symbol of apparently wide open and effortless fulfillment. Alone, a human being can barely survive in nature's great life drama. In organized groups, people can in due time fulfill their desires. The abundant life is in theory open to all, at least this is the ideal, the great dream. This symbol can also be given an erotic meaning ref referring to womanhood. At this stage of the series of symbols, the goal of happiness dominates the consciousness of cultural people, the more validly so, the more modest his desires. Religious philosophies like American New Thought glorify this social feeling of abundance, glamorizing it into an avid cosmic optimism and a cult of success. Not sure if that's good or not so good. Now I'm going to read the, the Eris degree as well, because the Eris degree is different than the Black Moon, Lilith, Moon, and Mars. Um, Aries, Eris is at 24 Aries. So hers, remember, she's the goddess of discord, right? She's throwing out the golden apple. She's going to upset everything. So here we have the possibility for man to gain experience at two levels of being. And the keynote is the revelation of new potentialities. Ooh, 
In some unspecified way, the symbol is a guarantee that, that man can operate successfully at two levels of consciousness if he has previously met the condition mentioned in the preceding symbol, which was be open and be able and willing to shape your translucent mind in the form of revealing spiritual fulfillment. And you will be able to experience life and power on inner as well as outer planes. The implied message is one of faith. Man can only truly experience what he deeply believes he can experience. That's pretty wise. This is the last stage of the fivefold sequence of cyclic phases. It announces the possibility of a new step in evolution, but it is still only a possibility, a promise. The individual is truly on probation. Tentative new beginnings. Hmm, I kind of like that. So to me, that all sounds pretty positive. Um, maybe a little upsetting because we are often stuck in the past and we don't necessarily like to try on the new. Uh, some of us do, right? Some of us are really ahead of the time that way, but others like to stay the course. And of course, we need that sometimes for stability, right? We need that for stability. Um, I didn't even have time this morning to look at the Pleiadian Earth energy, so I'm going to do that really quickly and then we'll turn in to do some readings. Oh, for the weekend, today we are at eight transcending. Remember, transcending energy is about moving to the next level, letting go of the baggage and being able to move forward with some purity of heart, with some uh, less weight around our necks. And the eight is the heart to heart connection, right? The heart to heart or the spirit to God, or I mean, God to, to man, spirit to man. Uh, connection, right? We are connected in the middle through the mirrors that we see of ourselves in others, but also the mirrors that man can see in themselves of God and spirit. Tomorrow is nine remembering. The nine energy is about harmony. It's bringing all these things into a harmonious new um, coherent message, perhaps. Remembering energy is about remembering, right, who you are, where you came from, how it is in times of, of when times are good and we're all in community together. It's a very community-oriented energy. And Sunday, the craziest day, is 10 loving, 10 loving. Loving energy was Lamotte, the star, the Venus star in uh, the Mayan calendar. Lamotte usually is beauty, right? Bringing some very calming energy, but also has a tendency to bring up from the underbelly the things that have not yet been dealt with so that we can clear out uh, those more negative aspects in the energy. So Lamotte or loving energy allows us to apply more love to the places in our heart or in our soul or in our communities and our families that need more loving energy applied to them. The 10, of course, is about manifesting, manifesting from uh, if you don't like what you see in your outer world, then you have to look back within and go, well, where were my intentions off here? Where did I uh, go wrong? Or did I go wrong? Or is, is what I'm seeing really the highest and best in this moment? And on the other hand, if you really love what you're seeing in the world uh, or in your outer world, in your life, then you know that you've done some key things correctly in the intentions or that you've released your expectations about how things should be or how they will come or when they will come. And you're just in the moment enjoying life through peace and prosperity. So good weekend through the Pleiadian Earth energies. And by the way, yesterday I mentioned that uh, Pia and Colin Baird smith the authors, along with the uh, group LARCMA that they uh, channel from the Pleiades, uh, they will be with me on September 17th here on the morning show. So they'll be talking about the new calendar for 2021, the changes that have come up through that. And you guys will get your great opportunity to ask questions of them on the calendar or on the Pleiadians or on that connection or anything, whatever you want to know, it'll be a great time for you to ask questions from them. And they're just a lovely couple. I think you will really enjoy meeting them. Some of you may have already seen them. They've been on other things that I've done. All right, so let's see, K order S, it is 840. So we have about 20 minutes to do some readings, hallelujah. Uh, I'm gonna go back to YouTube really quickly here because I haven't been there to see what questions people are asking. Uh, so I've got Laura that wanted a card. I see Jackie P, as opposed to JLo. Um, Laura, I got yours, Laura. 
Yeah, Laura, I got yours. Um, Loann, good morning. Uh, Debbie TT would like one. And uh, Jackie, I got yours. Loann would like one. Loann. Rueda, I love your name. I just love saying it. Rueda, Rueda. Jennifer Peachy would love a card if I have time and I just might have enough time today. I'm going one by one because I know sometimes I miss people. Uh, Jackie says you are on your other channel, by the way, if that helps. Oh my God, I knew it. So more production time for me this morning. Uh, anyway. Ursula, happy Friday. Good to see you, sweetie. And she says, I love that you're sharing the Sabian symbols as an FYI. Linda Hill has an available book called The Sabian Symbols as an Oracle. I, she also has a website that you can go to and um, go interact with those. You can choose a Sabian symbol that is something meaningful, sort of like an Oracle for the day, or you can go look up all of your uh, own Sabian symbols uh, for you, the degrees of your sun or your earth or your whatever you want. And uh, oh, by the way, the planet Mars and Eris and Black Moon Lilith and the moon will all be at the gate 42, just in case you were wondering, like, what gate would they be at in your human design during this conjunction on Sunday? The gate 42 is the gate of endings right? Putting an ending to something, celebrating that the ending has come and being able to move on into new territory. So that's on Sunday as well, the gate 42. Okay. And um, Rueda, she's got it on her calendar, 17 September, 2020, 8 a.m. Pacific time, uh, be able to be able to hear them. And they are coming to us live from uh, Cyprus at that point in time. So it'll be evening time for them as well. Asa, hello, darling. I haven't seen you in a couple days. Ursula would like a card. Ursula, thank you. That's awesome. And Joaquil Galiel, good morning. It's good to see you. One card for me. And are you new to us? I don't recall seeing that. Maybe you listen to us in the background. So welcome. It's great to have you with us live this morning. And okay. So now I have uh, cards. Now, uh, nobody's actually told me what kind of card they want. So I'm going to do what I usually do, unless you have a specific one that you want. Uh, I have dragons. I have the Oracle of Seven Energies, which is what I'm going to use mostly. I have goddess. I have the galactic heritage. I have spirit animals. I have Mayan. And I have the wisdom of the Oracle. Quite a few to choose from. If you are someone that is really resonating with a particular type, then uh, let me know. If not, I will pull one for what I think, you know, you might be interested in. Laura, I know that I think you said earlier, uh, my choice. So my choice for you is the Oracle of the Seven Energies. And um, I need to get back to Zoom. So when I show the cards, there we go, that I can actually show them and know that I'm showing them. Uh, so typically in the morning when I get, when I choose YouTube to broadcast live on, I go to, it, it takes me to a Gmail page so that I can choose the, the right um, YouTube channel. And I don't remember doing that this morning, so it probably defaulted to my old channel. Laura, for you, a tall tale with Pinocchio sitting on a hat, card number 35, which is an eight, a tall tale maybe speaking to a story you've been telling yourself. Let's see, this is a new deck to me, so I don't even know off the top of my head what it means. Um, but I do know that this deck doesn't seem to have a shadow or a, an upside down sort of message. So we end up with whether the card's upside down or not, we have the, the same message. The key concepts, denial, concealing the truth so you can manipulate and control the situation, fear-based communication, creating a narrative to hide behind, not allowing the fear of what others will think to influence your words, learning to communicate from a place of authenticity. Here's the message. You or someone else is telling a tall tale right now. You always know if a falsehood is spoken because it doesn't feel grounded. When you lie, you get high on an illusory sense of power that is doomed to fail at some point. You feel driven by the fear of exposure, but something makes you stick to your story even though you know it has no substance. Whatever lie we are caught up in isn't as important as the motive for it. Why does anyone lie? 
Perhaps we don't believe the truth is good enough, or we want to keep doing what we know we shouldn't be doing. Then there is the lie put forth while in denial, such as hiding an act of addiction. In this scenario, we may believe our own lies. The tall tale, the white lie, the stretching of the truth, and the blatant fabrication are all about control. The desire for it or the lack of it, the need to maintain it so we can manipulate the outer world and hide our inner one. Today, ask for the truth. Be willing to pay the price and be okay with the vulnerability your lie is exposing in yourself and others. Transparency is required to get to where you need to go, to be truly empowered, to reveal the strength of what is true and authentic. Any other path leads to a dead end. Remember the saying, the truth will set you free and get ready to fly unfettered. Woo, that's a big one for all of us, I think. Thank you, Laura, for taking one for the team and bringing that up for all of us because it makes me think about all the stories we tell ourselves, right? Of why we've done something, why this is, you know, had to happen or why we're continuing to do things the way that we're doing them. Um, and true that sometimes we have this falsehood that's running through there. Or in this case, it's often being something that you see happening uh, from someone else. So Laura, hopefully that is helpful guidance to you in some way. Uh, Jackie P, I pulled body and soul for you. Here it is, card number five, body and soul. Beautiful little dragonfly right there in it. Lotus flower, uh, a beautiful card. Let's see what this one means. Number five, the key concepts for this card are taking care of yourself, seeing yourself as a complete package, body not separate from soul, centered in your own sense of self, comfortable in your body, your authentic identity and physical health. Here's the message. Extreme self-care is called for when you receive this card. Answer truthfully, are you taking care of yourself? Your first choice may be to care for others before meeting your own needs. Check in with yourself. Are you experiencing HALT? Hunger, anger, loneliness, or tiredness? That's an acronym, HALT, H-A-L-T. Hunger, anger, loneliness, tiredness. This card is a signal that it's time to take a break from your current focus and get busy taking care of you because you are worthy of this care. What simple things require your attention so you can function optimally in your world and live your best life a day at a time? Another message that this card holds is about how you live with authenticity. Can you be at ease within yourself, you doing you, with pride and with self-worth? Remember, you are a soul that manifests through a body, a spiritual being having a human experience. And that means you are here on purpose, even if there are days when you wonder about that. There is an intentionality to your being here now, just the way you are in this time in our collective story. Your being here is important, for you are a precious being with a purpose, even if it seems elusive some days. Just know that life loves you. With that in mind, your job is to do your part to make your experience a healthy one. How, how you nourish your body, mind, and soul is directly related to how you experience your life. It's time to put yourself first, then everything will fall beautifully into place. Very cool. Good reminder for all of us with Venus moving into Cancer and our, uh, our need to nurture others, but we'll have to balance that with the need to nurture ourselves. So uh, Jackie, that was for you and hopefully that's helpful. Debbie Tibbetts to me all now. I'm going to go over here real quick and check and see if anybody uh, asked for a specific type of card. Ursula says, my pick. Loanne, I pick, uh, Joaquil didn't say anything. Okay, so I'm going to pick, I'm going to stick with the seven energy levels or seven, yeah, energies guidebook. So uh, for you, Debbie, as well. I know that Debbie um, works with, she was just at Oracle Palooza, not at it virtually, because it was a virtual um, event with Colette Baron reed So you probably heard a lot about these cards from them, from her anyway, during that. And 
Waking the Lion. I think we got this for someone yesterday. It might have even been for the um, collective. Waking the Lion, card number 10, is it? 19, which is a 10, which is a 1. So Waking the Lion in Debbie Tibbetts Tumiel. What might that mean? Uh, key concepts, boldness, the courage to move forward, even without knowing the way, facing that which is difficult or painful, and the audacity to step into the unknown. I remember this card because I know I love that word, audacity. Regardless of the outer conditions right now, you can't wait for your fear to lessen before you move forward. Wow, such an Aries message, right, of courage to take a step. In fact, despite the chaos and seeming disarray, you must be bold. Whatever your trepidation, act as if you have deep trust that all will be well, you project yourself, you. And nothing is promised to you, but you will never truly see magic if you don't take the risk, come to the edge of certainty in your life, and leap into the unknown. I remember this was Mimi's card yesterday for her birthday. You have no guarantee of immediate success. Still, you must summon your bravery in the face of possible pain, failure, or even success, and own your power. The act of making this leap, no matter the final outcome, awakens the lion within. Be proud of who you are and who you are becoming. No one can take this away from you. What type of courage is called for today? Only you know, and only you have the power to choose your path. Know what it takes just as much strength. No, excuse me. Know that it takes just as much strength and bravery to love and be vulnerable as it does to confront a personal challenge or physical obstacle. So call on your strength and stand your ground or can consciously temper your emotional reactions. Do nothing and trust in your partnership with the divine. Whatever your choice, you will not fail as long as you act with courage and integrity. Whew. That's a good card. Debbie. Okay, so that's, I think it's interesting that it mirrors uh, something that Mimi was also given yesterday which again is something that all of us have been given as a gift. Uh, Loann, I'm also going to pull a seven Oracle of the seven energies for you. And this deck, by the way, is available at uh, Amazon and other, ah, earth magic for Loann. Uh, I got this card yesterday when I was playing with them. Earth magic, such a pretty card. Feet on the ground, right? With magic all around it. It's the card number one. So it's really the first card of this Oracle deck. So profound in that it starts the ball rolling here in the earth. Key concepts, being grounded in nature, the quiet dark place where all things begin, where essence is first ignited before manifestation, knowing you are part of the earth and she is part of you. Earth magic speaks to the intrinsic relationship that you and all living things have with the consciousness of the earth, also known as Gaia. Imagine the oak tree that begins its journey as an acorn, gathering the life force it needs from the earth so it can sprout up from the ground. Because you are part of nature, you follow the same cycle of manifestation. Everything you are, your evolution, and the successful manifestation of your dreams begin below the surface of consciousness until an idea comes, conviction takes hold, and something meaningful can be planted. Be still for a moment, quiet your thoughts, and imagine anchoring your energy to the sacred quality of being part of this living earth. Do this mindfully to connect to this divine intelligence with the power to create the perfect form from the essence of a tiny spark of life. Indeed, this is miraculous. The message now is to trust that the seeds you've planted in your field of dreams are in good hands. The earth is a conscious divine source of love that is doing its part on your behalf. Slow down, take in the beauty of your life now, and trust that what you are intending is being nourished and is growing. There will be plenty of time later to tend to your garden, to water it and weed it. Great magic is germinating underground, working its way to the surface to deliver more blessings than you could imagine. Let it. Cool, cool message there, Loanne. What magic are you attempting to create in your life right now? Right? Great, great one. Uh, Laura's clapping. Jackie says, thank you, needed that. Loanne said, I could pick. Thank God I, I, I did. 
Debbie Tippett's Two Meal, funny. Starting my second alcohol painting. It's so new to me, but loving it. Thank you. My first painting, ugh, and I need to do my taxes. Oh, <gasps> fun. Um, but I would lean into the painting right now, right? Today, uh, we, I'm maybe tomorrow. Tomorrow, do your taxes, Debbie. All right, next on my list was Rueda. And Rueda, I am also, she wants a galactic. I just saw that. Ooh, maybe that's why the cards fell out of my hand. <laughs> um, so Rueda, let me get that deck out real quickly here. And we'll get you a galactic heritage card. These cards were giving profound messages yesterday as well. And uh, the one I drew for, from this deck was the very last card. The very last card. Funny, in both decks. That I, that I actually drew from myself. I drew the very last card from the Galactic one and the very first one, Earth Magic, that Loanne just got from the uh, energy. So like the Alpha and the Omega. Made me think of, well, what's leaving in order for me to start something new? So always, I'm always watching for those signs, right? Monique remembering in my Mayan and in my Pleiadian energy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ooh, um, Rueda. <laughs> this is funny um, because I can almost feel how this might play out in your life and sometimes is the card Stubbornness, number 40. This comes from the Pleiades past, right? So a past card, Stubbornness. So let's see, this might be fun for all of us because I think we're all a little stubborn. If you ask any of my friends, they will tell you I am very stubborn. If you ask my family, they will tell you the same thing. <sighs> so Rueda, this message relates to having a fixed idea of how things should be and trying to force reality to fit that picture. This was a strong trait in the ancient Pleiadian culture, which created many problems for their civilization. Some of us still carry this habitual pattern. Take a look at the situation you want changed. Be honest and see if you are trying to force a reality that doesn't exist in the now. Be truthful. In order to make change, we must first fully accept and relax with the situation as it is. Only then will things change in a natural way. The commentary. This card, like 39, the card before it, also represents one of the most painful lessons of the Pleiadians from this era. When the species was young, they were very idealistic, much like teenagers of today. They had a view of how reality should be, and they sought to force this vision on others. This is often a challenge of new species when they are young. Earth humans have this trait as well. During the dark times of Orion, the Orion people were in a lot of pain. The young Pleiadian species felt it was their duty to boldly come into the Orion system and force the empire to free its people. These Pleiadians were blind to the fact that they were creating karma for themselves and meddling in a situation that was not theirs to fix. In response, the Orions destroyed a planet in the Pleiadian system that was known to be one of its most beautiful. The Pleiadians were stunned and traumatized, but it was the experience they needed to grow up as a species and drop their arrogance. They left that planet a lifeless shell floating in space to always remind them of their own ignorance. If this card comes up in your reading, look at the surrounding cards, maybe the cards of other people that have come up that might, you might resonate with this morning. It may be about a connection that you have to this time in Pleiadian history, or it may simply be a warning about becoming attached to your beliefs about how things should be in reality and a stubborn drive to change them according to what you feel is right. Wow. You know, and Aries energy for the weekend is very much like that, right? Stubborn, headstrong, uh, pushy kind of energy. So maybe that's really good for you to look at. Maybe there's a situation for the weekend coming up for you that you'll want to be very aware of, Rueda. Okay, Jennifer, Jennifer Peachy, I believe it was. And I'm checking to see if, um, uh, you're welcome. Um, I don't think you gave me a card that you wanted for sure. Did you, Jennifer? I would love a card, but you didn't specify. So I'm going to do the Oracle of the Seven Energies. Um, and where did I put them? I don't even have all mine open today. Like, that's so weird. Uh, okay, so Jennifer, this one is for you. And you get 
tender embrace. Oh, what a, I mean, this card just makes my heart swell. Can you see this? Two elephants in an embrace. It is card number 22, a magical number, right? A number of master builder, building, the building of something. Tender embrace, the building of love. Let's see what that one is all about. Card 22. The key concepts here are compassion, warm-hearted care for self and others, sensitivity and empathy, benevolence and kindness. Put your hand on your heart and breathe deeply, inhaling a sense of gratitude. Now, how do you feel? Keep doing this, tuning in to the world around you, others you know and even those you don't know. Can you feel compassion for them? Compassion is an emotion of tenderness and sensitivity. It's a feeling of benevolence and reverence as you stand witness to the suffering of the world. Now is the time to reduce that pain and focus on compassion in all areas of your life. Today, do something deliberately kind for another. Even looking a stranger in the eye and smiling can make a world of difference. The questions to ask are, where do I need to be kinder and gentler? How can I serve and in what capacity can I be in alignment with the solution to the suffering of the world? Could it be that you need to be more compassionate toward yourself? If you spend all your time in service to others, it's easy to forget about your own needs. When you accept yourself, you can bring more loving, tender energy to others. Today, make a commitment to practice self-compassion. Release yourself from the burdens of perfectionism. Allow yourself the grace to be human and then do the same for others. It's not your job to tell how there's how <laughs> it's not your job to tell others how to express themselves, even if you don't like the way the world behaves. Today, be kind for no reason at all and watch miracles arise. I love it. Those little elephants. Mm. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so that was for you, Jennifer. Ursula. Ursula. Uh, I, Ursula, I think I'm going to do a, uh, she said you pick, so I'm going to pick. I'm going to pick, um, oh, very good, Rueda. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the uh, seven energies as well, Oracle of the seven energies. We might as well work with these cards as much as possible right now and see why it is that they've emerged into our consciousness at this moment in time, right? What is it about seven? What is it about the seven energies? Which by the way, the seven energies are earth, water, fire, love, sound, light, and thought. So those are the seven energies we're dealing with in the Oracle of the Seven Energies. Okay, so Ursula. Quieting the Mind, card number 32. Also a beautiful card. Stars and water, sunset maybe, star set. Look at all of that. Quieting the mind. All right, let's see. That is number 32. And there we go. So the key concepts here. Meditation as a commitment. The need for silence. Peace within, despite chaotic outer conditions. Peace within, despite outer conditions chaotic outer conditions, letting go of the monkey mind and mindfulness. Life is chaotic, busy, loud, frenetic, and overwhelming. Some days, all that noise is like the roar of thunder echoing around you, and it feels as if you're being pummeled by a rainstorm. Isn't this why we take vacations to get away to somewhere peaceful? In spite of the surrounding din of the world, today you need to slow down and find a bit of peace. So go ahead and take a deep breath right now. Make a commitment to be still, if only for five minutes. Count your breaths and be mindful of every one of them. Know that you have all the time in the world to do the things that need doing. Everything is perfect as it is. Our core beliefs about the world originate in our thoughts and feelings, which then become our perceptions. If our thoughts are all over the place, that is how we will experience the outer world. But what if the outer world didn't matter at all? Hmm. What if at our center, there were a place that is always calm, where the mind doesn't have a million things to say, where problems and challenges aren't nearly as important as we think they are? Today represents Today requires you to take an internal break 
and go to that silent space to regroup, meditate on the stillness within, choose a peaceful mind and nothing else. You will be amazed by how easily everything falls into place once you do. I feel like that card is for all of us as well. <laughs> Finding that place to quiet the mind, quieting the mind. Lovely card. All right, Ursula. Next will be Joaquil, and I believe you said the Oracle. Um, so I'm going to say Oracle of the Seven Energies, right? Is that the one you mean? Because I also have Wisdom of the Oracle, which is another deck by Colette Baron Reed, and it looks like this. So which one do you think you want, Joaquil? Um, you're welcome, Jennifer. Uh, I think I'm going to pick the, uh, the Oracle of the Seven Energies. And if you decide you want the other one, we'll just pull one from there as well. Because there's always a lag between what I ask of you and then when the answers come. So uh, in the interest of moving things along, I'm going to go with the Oracle of the Seven Energies for you, Joaquil. And it, I hope I'm saying your name right. Joaquil or is it Joaquiel? Um, that sounds very angelic, Joaquiel. And this is for you. Oh, you get a twofer. Mm -hmm. I, I get a message here. And now I just had this like insight into something for you. Um, into me, I see. That was the first card. Into me, I see. Card number eight. Seeing within. Look at that beautiful card. The second one that came out was shining through shining through card number 30 so this one is a three shining through and into me i see you get the idea that maybe this is about self-worth and worthiness and allowing the beauty within to come without to come out and play we'll see number eight key concepts for into me i see is intimacy Trust in another, dropping shields and rigid boundaries to allow connection, the willingness to be vulnerable. At certain precious moments, you're called into a deep and meaningful connection with the world or another person. A magical affinity arises with the kind of intimacy that in turn encourages a greater understanding of yourself. The relationship acts as a mirror, helping you see your own patterns. What it reflects about you can further your own personal evolution. Now is the time to take a risk by connecting with another. Can you see how far you've come? Can you see what is still active within you that needs to change or heal? You will discover more about who you are as you discover more about another. Even if you cannot possibly know what it's truly like to be in someone else's shoes, you can listen and learn. This is a magical gift being offered to you right now, especially because this is the week of the earth at the gate of listening in our human design. And this concept applies beyond romantic connection. What do the dynamics in your closest friendships, work relationships, and family say about you? Relationships are extraordinary opportunities for healing. When predicated on honesty and caring, they have a great impact on how you contribute to the world. Intimate relationships hold up a mirror of truth and reveal more treasures than you might ever expect. If you can look into it, Take a risk and see everything is beautiful, even in its imperfections. Imagine how deep you could go. Truth, truth, truth. And shining through was the other card. That was this one, right? Light busting forth from, it looks like a lotus flower maybe, or some beautiful flower. And the key concepts of this card are self-expression without filters or masks authentic communication, being proud of who you are, shining in the world, refusing to make yourself small just to belong. You are being called to step into your true power and essence. This is one of those times when you're required to bring everything you are, all that you've learned, experienced, and integrated, and offer it up in service to the world. When you take center stage, you will be noticed. Yes, as you shine brightly, you will naturally stand apart from others. This idea may bring up excitement and genuine pride or discomfort, but this is not the time to make yourself small to avoid the glare of the spotlight and potential punishment by others. It takes courage, but know that this is the right thing for you today. You have come so far. 
you have been in the proverbial back of the room in learning and gathering mode for so long, and this important time has served its purpose. You must now step into a new consciousness, seizing a new opportunity to share your wisdom. You will be like a lighthouse, shining through the dark, illuminating the way for others. Be careful of the voices in your head that say you can't, or you don't know enough, or who are you to shine? The better question is, who are you not to shine? All you are and all you have become is by the grace of the divine. Now it is your duty to share your gifts. Celebrate this. Celebrate. I think that's a great card combination there for you. I don't even know you, but I just get the feeling that maybe you've been sitting on the fence, waffling about something that maybe not feeling smart enough, good enough, tall enough, whatever enough, right? Just do it. Just go out there and do it. Uh, Loanne, thank you. Janet enjoyed all the cards this morning. Been listening and breathing all week for my serious conversation I need to have. Hopefully that helped get you to uh, a place where that conversation can take place with love, compassion, um, and enthusiasm, optimism, love, love, and more love. All right, I'm going to draw one last card for us today. It's going to be for the collective, and I'm going to pull it from the Spirit Animal Deck to guide us through what likely might be a bit of a challenging weekend with some of the uh, energies of conflict out there, whether it's to us personal or just something that's going on in the world, we may need something that we can, a totem that we can take with us that can help us put everything in the right perspective, let's say. So let's see here. Ah, ooh, ah, oh, wasp energy. Wasp in protection, by the way, it's upside down. Here's wasp. And Wasp said, sometimes life stings. I always cringe when I see this little booger. It's card number 64, which is a 10. It's a one and upside down. So protection. So let's see what this little guide has to say for us. This is also, isn't this the last card in the deck? No, it can't be. Wolf is. So 64, Wasp Spirit says, are you holding on to anger, jealousy, or resentment because you got stung? Or could you have just stung yourself by comparing yourself to others? There will always be someone else who is more successful, happier, thinner, richer, etc. Jealousy is the false belief that you can't have what you want or someone could take away something uh, that was supposed to be yours. Let it go and release all those feelings that are making the sting hurt long after the stinger has been removed. Wasp spirit has woken you up, and now you are called to trust that disappointment can lead you to a different and better path. Align with spirit now and trust that this too shall pass and is already doing so, for the pain subsides when you stop telling the story of how much it hurt. Wow, I can't even imagine how that might play out, but I think it's always a good reminder. And I always save wasps. I'm the wasp saver. They always fall into the water. Uh, I keep water out for the birds and I keep water out for the dogs that wander around and uh, wasps always seem to fall into the bowl and I always happen upon them. And then I'm always like, how do I save this little creature, with, creature without getting stung? So a leaf works really well. A piece of mail works really well. I get them out and I save them. Wasp spirit in protection. All right. Well, I can't wait for Monday so we can see and share all that happened for us over the weekend. Hopefully everybody takes good care. Remember, conflict and confrontation always possible here. Anger, jealousy, revenge, all those energies have really no place, but they can be a call for more love. So apply more love this weekend. If you find yourself in a situation of conflict, love, love, love is the antidote to any kind of anger or conflict. All right, everybody, take care. Thank you so much for allowing me to share my time with you and you sharing your time with me. I will see you on Monday. Bye for now.